when you take this one step further into the multi-cloud world, Minio can run in any environment. However, when you go into public cloud and you really don't want um, to have different persistent storage solutions, Azure, Google may have their own storage solutions from a S3 equivalent perspective, but the APIs are slightly different. Azure doesn't have any of the S3 there, they have their own blob storage. There are differences. And if you're truly trying to run across multiple clouds and your application just wants a single gateway, single point of entry, single API stack, then you come to MinIO. MinIO is the abstraction for that because as I said, this whole build up with multi-cloud, uh, the, the Kubernetes and containers and uh, simplicity that MinIO provides from an integration perspective shows itself as huge benefit when it comes to a multi-cloud infrastructure and architecture. Let's talk about tiering. Tiering is simply a very important feature that allows you to, based on time, certain time frames, one the hot and warm type of an approach in your capacity of the data or the data that you're collecting. It allows you to basically have the hot data in a front end single namespace. And then with MinIO, you can, with MinIO ILM and tiering, you can push the data that is older than one week, uh, 10 days or a month, whatever the policies dictates, to a different environment. It can be another MinIO cluster with lower cost hardware. It can be uh, Amazon S3 or one of the other uh, public cloud providers for you. And this is becoming a necessity or a need for many because they wanna run two different environments and resiliency of that is cr critical. So they wanna run MinIO on-prem and have their main data sitting there, applications seeing the full namespace with the archived and tiered information. But they also want to keep that data somewhere else, not in their data center for resiliency, for HA, high availability, and disaster recovery purposes. Because of that, tiering is critical, whether it's for TCO from an operational cost perspective or for resiliency and disaster recovery perspective, tiering is really important. And we do the tiering in a bucket level, object and bucket level, and that allows people a lot of flexibility. And also this is basically bridging the, you can have an on-prem OpenShift uh, environment that is running MinIO, and that's your full namespace and your application use that. And then you can go into a, a, a different environment, like a multi-cloud environment for uh, for saving it for legacy and archival. And it's purely for economy and efficiency in some cases. In these examples, you can see some of the, from HDD, from SSD to HDD or vice versa, depending. Most of the time people use SSD in the front end and use a lower cost HDD solution from private to public or within the public clouds, you can have multiple uh, multiple solution using this functionality of tiering. The next uh, critical functionality is replication. And we have done replication at a very granular level. We support, uh, MinIO support both synchronous, asynchronous, active-passive, active-active, all combinations. And in the past, uh, file and block replication were done at a volume level. A one terabyte volume type of replication was a challenge. But with object storage and how MinIO implemented its replication, we are at the granularity of the object and we immediately replicate it at the object level so that you can get, it's a bucket level replication, but you can upload, as long as you upload these uh, objects, we don't really wait and we can immediately send it over across to the other side uh, for HA and DR perspective and your application gets across multiple to another data center, whether it's uh, close or um, different geographies for longer distance. And the granularity aspect that you're not doing it as SAN and NAS used to do as huge volumes is the critical point that object storage replication and the way MinIO implemented is much more efficient than the old ways. And that's quite important, whether you're replicating on top of uh, public cloud EKS like Kubernetes, or you have one instance of MinIO cluster and Red Hat OpenShift on-prem, and you're replicating across to a public cloud offering, that becomes quite critical. And one more aspect of that uh, replication is we, we developed also something called multi-site replication. So the replication aspects goes from not two into more than two, so three or four 
different sites can be combined under the same umbrella for replication purpose purposes from an async and sync and being active active. But on top of that, we also com we also replicate or make sure that the configuration of each site from an integration perspective gets replicated to other sites to essentially creating a big pool of um, Minio deployments across different environments. In summary, before I turn it to Daniel to go into the details of Minio operator and console and show you guys a demo of the details, the reason why we wanted to talk about Minio and OpenShift today in this webinar is things have changed dramatically from a Kubernetes and the architectures and modern architectures in the industry Minio took the leading role in providing persistent storage in that new Kubernetes world with OpenShift. And with the integration work we have done, we made it so seamless that it is just like installing another application on top of the Kubernetes ecosystem. And that's exactly what we're going to show. And the most important features that Minio has the performance is that we are the fastest performing AWS S3 deployment on-prem with the right hardware. We have done the benchmarks and published about that. And that's very clear. We can extract the maximum throughput from NVMe drives with a Gen 4 PCIe bus with 100 gigabit network. And that's been proven. We have huge application catalog and marketplace from the perspective of anybody who has written into an endpoint of S3 can integrate into Minio. And that provides a lot of partnership and ease of integration for Minio software from a persistent storage provider perspective. With that said, I'll let Daniel to go into the specific of the part of the, um, the, the piece that within the Minio stack that provides all of this with OpenShift and any other Kubernetes deployment and public cloud. And uh, that's our Minio operator, which allows you to install Minio simply in a Kubernetes environment and Minio console, which is our UI essentially on top of the Minio storage stack. 